Okay, we're back again with Adam from ProSo, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and answer some questions that we were asked on Facebook. I did a couple of Facebook posts um, inviting people to ask any questions they have about the industrial sewing machines. doesn't matter what brand it is or anything like that. Adam's more than happy to help answer any questions yep. regarding any brand of industrial sewing machine. He's an industrial sewing machine expert. And you've helped me heaps over the years with my other brands before yeah. I even got the pro so Yeah, a lot of them are very similar, in yeah. similar categories. Yeah. They have their own little, yeah. little tiny differences. But. So I've got Facebook up and I'm just going to go through to the posts that I've got here. We'll put here, show all comments. Um, what have we got here? Someone here has got like Claire, um, had written, I had a horrible experience with a back presser foot. Situation was resolved. Oh, something to do with a screw yep, on the yep. side of her foot. That's this adjustment at the back, at the back here. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, at the, the back of the adjust machine. Adjust how high your feet lift. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So she found a that's quite common. Yeah. Screw there to fit. Can needle screws. Yeah, you can replace your needle screws. So they're just available with the um, the one one eight, uh, the eleven eighty one is a common machine. Yep. Uh, just GP contact your supplier. Yeah, yep. if you're in Queensland, talk yep. to the um, guys at SMA, or if you're down yep. south, there's plenty of people down down Melbourne and stuff like that. Yep. But yeah, a lot of time they're a generic screw, but definitely available. Yep. Um, if they're snapped off, they're hard to get out. Um, oh, you know, but if it's just yeah. worn, or you've, you've ruined yep. the head of it, yep. yeah, replace them and order a few more because they're gonna, they're gonna wear out. And yeah. just keep it in the drawer Absolutely. Right, they're with your machine. Yeah, and they're a, few, spares, a couple of bucks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go down to the next question we've got here. Um, I got here. So Karen um, has got here. I want to save for an industrial, but only have room for one. I sew mostly cork and cotton with interfacing. I'm thinking for saving for a cylinder arm with a bed. Is this a good starting point for an industrial or too much power? Yep. All I see people use are Thor's. Yep. Is this the brand to research or should I look at something else too? Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> that's, no, that's, that's a good one. So with, yep. um, and this is the problem, when, you, when you're talking about industrials, um, there's different classes. Yeah. So even though all industrials are heavy, as yep. in picking them up, because they're all cast oh, iron and, yeah, and there's no yeah, plastic yeah, in them, yeah, like even these yeah. semi-industrial... Nothing like a domestic machine. Yeah, there's plastic. <laughs> even the semi-industrials, they're plastic gears and all the rest of it. Yeah. But... Um, but so yeah, when it comes to um, cork and cottons, um, once you get, which is classed as medium, uh, the light duty, so that's a light yep, duty machine, light so duty. what you'd make garments out of. Yep. But because they're still very robust, they will sew heavier stuff. You can go heavier gauge needles and, yep. and stuff like that. Um, I would probably recommend a, a light duty industrial for that. Um, yep. So you'll still be able to sew, and you, you can still quilt on it. You can free motion quilt on it. You can still oh, do can your you light drop stuff. Your feet dogs, we no. Have people, so you just need to cover the feet. No, dogs. you just turn your stitch length to zero. Oh, and it just goes up and down. It doesn't go forward and backwards. Yeah. There, you can physically do it, but then you've got to reset it correctly again. So don't go. So don't go don't playing do it. with that. Just yeah. go to zero, and yeah. it'll just hop up and down, and it won't matter. And if they free motion cool fine. Because oh, oh, yeah, no where cost. I work, um, we've had people there looking at the straight stitch industrial mm. machines. We've got like they had a Juki one there. Yeah. And the lady was asking about you know free motion quilting, and that someone she'd seen had an industrial machine, and they could drop the feed dogs. Yeah. And no. I did a bit of research for no. her, and like mechanically yes, yeah. but you. If, once you drop your feed dogs, you've got to bring them back up to the correct feed height again. Yeah. And and it, it, a technician doesn't have to do that, but it, don't yeah. mess with it. You don't yeah. need to. Yeah. I've got some. Not um, something we should be. I've got free motion quilting foot. I'll send you one, oh, and you can have okay. a play with it. Have a little it works play perfectly. Play can do you it set now. your speed I've on done the machine. Free motion quilting, and I yeah. usually do it on my domestic. No problems. Oh, yeah. you set you set the speed on your machine. at say 1,200 stitches a minute, yeah. 1,500, whatever you're comfortable yeah. with. Nail the pedal and just go just for go it. Just go for it. Yeah, it's yeah. easy. Yeah, I find um, it quite relaxing. Yeah. yeah, it is. So now yeah. that's a good point. Now with cylinder arms, yes, most cylinder arms are a compound feed. Yeah. So that means you're going beyond a walking foot yeah. and then into the next level. So yes, they are going to be designed for heavier stuff. Yeah. They're not going to be happy sewing light stuff. Yeah. You, you, you know, you've, got, you've, you've overstepped the mark. Yeah. Some machines you can take up so far, but you can't bring them too far back down yeah. once you go into a yeah. medium. I um, made the mistake myself personally when I first got my first industrial sort of walking foot machine. I went straight yeah. for the compound feed. Yeah. 
and I found it was overkill. Yeah, like, it is. Oh, yeah, it was it's too like much. Your machine. And then I traded it yeah. and got a nut, like, yeah, just a normal mm. walking. The ironic thing stuff. here, the lady, um, Karen, mentions about the Thors. Yeah. That machine is the same as a Thor. Yeah, it's so exactly the same. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cylinder arm. Thor's just the American brand. It's sold through Sunny Sewing in America. Yeah. And they just get uh, Chinese, um, uh, that's a cop, this is a copy of a Juki, yeah. 1341, that's the blatant yep, so honesty. That's what I've got, and yep. that, and that And the Thor, they just badge him as a Thor, I just put my yep. own name on him. Yep. I, I, could, I could put, you know, Banana Republic, yeah. you know, I, mean, <laughs> Queensland, I could put that on if I wanted to. Yeah, so, Adam and Chris's, uh, yeah, that's whatever right. you want to call that's it. A, you just, yeah, that's yeah, a, it literally yeah. just cost you a small amount per machine. Yeah. So the Thors are exactly the same. So Thor's just a generically branded machine, yep. but also Thor's make, they have different models in their range too. But I would, I would, I think uh, um, uh, compound feed's too heavy for the lighter stuff. Yeah, I'd stick I to a, a light so. duty and just, and just push it to the upper limit of it, of yeah. what it can do. And I think I answered, I did it, gave um, Karen there a quick answer and I thought, and I put there, I, I think you'd probably find industrial walking foot. Yeah, so I, would, yeah. I would definitely look at those two options. Yeah. If you're doing a lot of light stuff, even the walking foot might be a tad, tad heavy. A bit too much, yeah. Um, because the, the, the little flat bed machine. Especially with your new straight stitch machines that you've got in, in the process. Yeah, they well, they, they have a long stitch more. length, yeah. So they have yeah. a six yeah. mil stitch length now. So yeah. if you want to do top stitching on a bag, you can run the 71X1 needle, the bigger needle, and you can do heavy stuff so with a 23. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, yep, yeah. no problems. No, I was pretty, because Adam was telling me about their straight stitch machine, because I still got my old brother. So I might have to do an upgrade later on. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so now we've got here, um, just having a little quick read here. We're not sure about compound fuel, so good, servo motors. Yeah, okay, yeah. so there is a so compound feed and um, uh, the two different. Um, so this is from Stephanie, yes. Yeah, if, if, um, actually, if, if the girl, if the guys, uh, guys and gals go on to Oz Commercial Sewing Machines mm. on YouTube. YouTube and Facebook, but on Facebook, yeah. I did this, I've got a slow motion video of all the feed systems. Yeah, I've watched it. Yeah, that. they're great. I've watched all um, your videos. <laughs> drop feed, needle feed, walking foot, compound feed. You'll see how it all works. How they work in slow motion so yeah. you don't understand the principle but yeah. compound feed is basically for really sticky items that you that you don't want as much slippage um for leathers and stuff but yeah. then you'll find a walking foot really is much more economical generally yeah. they're a cheaper feed system then they're, 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 they're easy to get there's more options yeah so a walking foot would do the trick yeah well, as far as motors it's got servo motor so they you know we all started off with clutch motors underneath which ran continuously were noisy yeah, and noisy. hard to control then we went to servo motors which are a miniature version of a under under bench motor but they were yeah. controllable yeah because i'll that's what i upgraded my brother, to your brother. brother one yeah. um so but it still has a belt yep and, and it's adjustable speed most machines now like your old machine yeah. or your new machine they're direct drive yeah so they have a servo motor built into the head yeah. so there's no belt no. There's no noise, little, very little vibration, yeah. very smooth. So and now the, the new one, not even the oil tray. Um, no, then dry right. sumps yeah. that, yeah. Oh. So, so that's the sort of thing, clutch motor, servo motor, um, direct, direct drive. drive servo motor, yeah. yeah. And the direct drive, it's, is that what helps it make it more quieter Absolutely, yeah. as yeah. well? It's the best, there's no doubt about it. And, you, and you'll probably find, you know, even my basic walking foot machine, my yep. cheapest walking foot machine is direct drive now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they're all going to go that You're way. going, that, that's your yep. stock standard yep. now. Yep. yep, yep. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got here next. So we've answered that one. Um, Carol has got here, I was looking for a suggestion on a good portable heavy duty machine. I've been yeah, I've read that one. Industrials. Yeah. yeah. What I recommend, um, there's She's not a lot. So, yeah. The one that I recommend, um, I do actually have one in the shop and they're available mm -hmm. depending on um, a few mm -hmm. of my uh, colleagues have them. Yeah. They're um, they're basically modelled off the um, Sailrite. Oh yeah. Yeah. Portable this, yeah, zigzag. The they're they're a zigzag yeah. walking foot machine. Oh okay. Um, uh, so they do it, which is for, basically for um, for marine applications yeah. for vessels to put on a boat. You yeah. can fix a sail if you need to. You yeah. can even get them in hand crank if you need yeah. to. But yeah. they're they're basically the size of a little old St James or whatever, you know. But they're yeah. heavy. They're heavy. They're not light. Yeah. They're, um, like the old Singer. Yeah, like they're, they're, they're sort of machines, like, that kind sort of, of like that. But they have an actual walking foot, like yeah. your machines do. Um, and on the underneath oscillating hook, like the old Bananas have. So yeah. they're really reliable and um, 
uh, cost effective. Yeah. Um, you can run a decent thread in them. Um, they're quite crude and noisy to yeah. operate. They're not yeah. the nicest thing to, yeah. but they're very functional and they are portable. You can yeah. definitely pick it up and um, yeah, slide it underneath a bed yeah, or something so like if, that. Because Carol's got issues traveling full time, living in an yeah. RV. If, if Carol contacts me, it is um, mm. pro so she just. Yeah. It messes me through that. I'll send her an image of the one that I've got. Yeah. I've got a colleague up at um, Townsville that sells quite a few of them, Laurie. Yeah. He's got a few of them up there, and he's a um, lot of yeah. silos uh, and that up there, yeah. so he sells yeah. a few of them up there. What I'll do That's too, the best um, when we put this video up, I'll put links for yeah, okay. him to be able to contact you directly. Yeah. And also, of course, we've got Pete down, well. down in Victoria. Pete, but, yeah, you know, he has them as great. well, so yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Um, okay, here's a, this is what is probably gets confusing with a lot of people. Yeah. Rayo's asked, what brand of industrial sewing machine wow. is the best? The million dollar question, and, hey? Yeah. I um, love, look, uh, yeah, I did look, a reply here, it comes down a bit down. Yeah, because I, 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 I think the biggest thing that's changed now is everything's changed so much, you know, like, um, you know, you look at, say, back in the day, you know, say, for example, you talk about Holden and Ford. Yeah. In, yeah. They all used Adler's. And Durkops, like machine, German machines, very yeah. expensive, yeah. really expensive, but yeah. beautiful, you know. Now, a lot of those machines are made even in China. As, as you know, the cost effectiveness, yeah. you know, you're looking at, you know, do you want to buy a machine that's $15,000 or can you literally buy a machine for $3,000 that does exactly, exactly the same the job? Same so, as far and as the brands, the same yeah, and, and that's right, you look at um, brands like Juki, the majority yeah. of their machines, most of them are made in China. They did do some in Vietnam. And there's, you know, there's still, I think they still have some Japanese stuff and that, you know, but again, it's all reflected in the price. Yeah. Um, so it all depends, but at the end of the day, the end result really is the same. It's about yeah. how do you want to get to A, a to B? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you want to do that and have to mortgage your house or do you want to do it economically yeah. or do you want to, do you know what I mean? And, and what features mm. you want? Because every yeah. brand has different features. So there's a lot of variables yeah. there. And the more features um, tend like with anything, Yeah. The more bells and whistles. You know, the, the bottom line is, Chris, gets. is, um, What's your budget? Yeah, that's that's all that matters. What are you making? What's your and, budget? Yeah, if you want, if you if you've yeah. got six thousand dollars, you want to spend it. Yeah. Buy the best you machine you can get for six thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. If you've only got sixteen hundred dollars, you can still get a brand spanking new walking foot machine for sixteen hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a hard one, but it's yeah. um horses. It comes to down to cars. Like my hubby, yeah. he's just ordered. He's waiting on his new car. He wanted a totally different car to me. Yeah. His car's costing a hell of a lot more than my car costs because he wants the full bang that's it. and yeah, four-wheel drive. And, that, and that's not even down to brand. That's even features. So yeah. the brands the brands have not become irrelevant because they're not even made. Like you might have bought a Juki that for many, many years ago yeah. or a brother that yeah. was made in Japan. Not a single person from that factory have touched the new machine that's made by Juki. It's yeah. totally different. So different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Quite, quite different, yeah. Uh, oh, Annette's just got here. She's got all eight machines. Annette's just yeah, yeah, she's, she's got eight up. machines. Yeah, good on you, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> You're a, she's a mechanic's dream. We yeah, love ladies that have got lots of machines. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, oh, Carlos has got once a sewing, a sewing room tour. We'll be doing more videos. Don't you worry. Um, what else have we got here? Um, I want to get a cylinder arm. This is from Tanya. Yep. I want to get a cylinder arm, but I like having a flat bed. Do they all have the option to come with or purchase separately? Yep. The slide on bit that makes it flat. Yeah, we talked about that, didn't we? So um, essentially yeah. I found that my suppliers, they will not supply me a, a yeah. extension table because uh, yeah. they're literally all, nearly all um, handmade or, yeah. or custom made by someone in that area. Yeah. There is some place in the States. I know um, Jen, she got her for her... Um, She's got a, yeah, a 246. A yeah, Jen relics. got a, a table online from, uh, and that yeah. she's really happy with that yeah. from a lady that does them over there. They cut them out of aluminium. Um, I think, um, I guess the, the thing with cylinder arms, straight away you're paying a premium price because cylinder arms generally, are for, for a similar setup, they're more expensive in general because yeah. yeah. they don't make as many of them and they're an unusual machine and they're a yeah. lower volume. Yeah. So they're more expensive. So it, unless you're doing tight cylindrical items or internals or something where you do need that, yeah. A lot of the time, most people, you know, how many people do you know that, that do bags have a cylinder arm? Not yeah. many. Yeah, I've only yeah. not, well, you know, I've only just recently got my very first cylinder arm mm. and I've made bags for several years yeah. without one. Yeah, so do you, you know, can do it. it. I didn't have to have it. I've made leather bags. I've done all sorts of bags without one. Yeah. It's a nice 
have one. Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a luxury. It's a love, love it thing to have. It is a luxury, but yeah. my business paid for the luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? absolutely, yeah. Um, it wasn't like, oh, I need to have it. It's like, oh, no, just, uh, oh, the because it, it does. But I don't use it the most. It's not my most used machine. No, no. No, my walking foot is my most yeah. used machine. And they're a compound, and they're generally a compound feed. Um, so they are yeah, getting into the heavy class, yeah. away from medium into heavy. Yeah. So if you're doing, if you want to do um, mm. some smaller things, um, yours is good too. You've got the adjustable um, foot on the yeah. uh, adjustable knob on the top to adjust your press yeah. foot height, which is really cool on the fly. Yeah. Um, we didn't go over the cylinder arm today. No. But we sort of like more time. I'm getting. Mine's yeah. arriving soon, You'll be so we might be able to videos. do something between us yeah. on that too. Um, I yeah. might be able to do a video and we can sit yeah. together. And I can do a video too and share a bit more. Like when yeah. I'm doing, like when I'm going to be doing, when I'm working on a bag, I can share what I'm doing and things that I've learned. Yeah. And then you can even have a look and see what I'm doing. You might share some tips on how I could do it. Even yeah, more, yeah. Or well, like some little techniques I, or I'm, shortcuts. I'm having, we have trouble keeping hold of the cylinder arms because we don't order lots of them. Yeah, um, so fast. Then they go. Yeah. And, and half the time they're sold before you even get them in the shop yeah. and you don't have them for long enough to even have a video, a video <laughs> or a play on them or anything. So it's pretty good. We'll see what but happens yeah, with this one, hopefully. You don't, it's <laughs> not, like, believe me, it's not an essential to have. Like, you don't have to start with a And if, you, if you've got a, a handy hubby or a handy um, partner, yeah. Um, they can make an extension table. It's really yeah. simple. You just make a crude base that fits on with four legs, attach yeah. it to the table however you want. You've got screw holes on the bench, yeah. depending on the machine, on the tape, on the right, machine so itself. I hope you can come up with yeah, for me. Yeah. He's a little bit handy. He's yeah. renovated this room for me. There you go. <laughs> now, if you only get, this is just a question. I know some other people have often thought that. If you could only get one industrial machine and mm -hmm. you make bags and you do a bit of vinyl, a little bit of leather, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Would your recommendation be your walking foot machine? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah just yeah. go straight to. You yeah, threw me there. I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking between a cylinder arm or a flatbed. Yeah, yeah. walking foot, hundred all the way. Yeah, all the way. Um, yeah, you've got. Um, okay, that's a, that's a good point because yeah, sure. Some of the machines now, if you're running a flatbed machine, say your brother, it's got a DBX needle, or even yeah. if it's got the one thirty five X five needle, you can get a big size. Yeah. So you can run a bigger needle and heavier threads, but what you've got to realise is a light duty machine has a thin needle system, has a little bobbin. Yeah. 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 It has a very short stitch length in comparison yeah. to a walking foot. Yeah. My, um, the maximum I can do is a four. Four. Yeah. Some machines like my new yeah. ones will do six, which is great, but that's not the norm. Yeah. Um, so you've got, and you're feeding, you've got, if you're sewing vinyl, it's yeah. sticky on the foot. Yeah. Because my got, stitch length looks like it it's shortens. like a size two and yeah. a half sort of thing. So yeah, you're really, struggles. you're trying to go four wheel driving on the beach with a yeah. Commodore. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to work. It's going to work sometimes. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, that's it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's, 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 it's a comp, you're making a big compromise. Yeah. Um, if you want to do a lot of light stuff, yeah, you, then you just have to deal with that and make the compromise. But yeah, yeah if you're just doing bags, no brainer. Walking yeah. foot Don't all walk day long. All and you've got, you got a big bobbin, so because you you're yeah. using a heavy thread, so you get a bigger capacity. Yeah. And all your machine has t bigger clearances to run yeah. thicker threads yeah. and stuff, yeah. 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 And you're not fighting with a compound feed that's just going to chew up your light fabrics but, and things. Yeah, like that's that. right. Yeah, it's yeah. too much. Um, oh, this is, no, there's. Um, I just thought I mentioned to uh, Kayla. Yeah. Oh, Kayla, Kayla, there's Kayla. Yeah, she's Kayla. she's got the same machine as yours. She's down oh, in um, okay, yeah. she's down in Campbelltown. Hi Kayla. And okay. she's um. Kayla's got here. Hi Chris. By the seams of it, we will have the same industrial machine on brand new to industrial sewing machines. Love to have a chat and have a few questions. So I've got there. Yeah. Feel free. Yeah, she's to post doing really well with it too. Yeah, oh, that's good. Um, oh, she's got here. I have like two A4 size pages of oh, that questions. Like her, yeah. <laughs> While I was looking no, for the industrial. Um, she's getting right into Adam's it, yeah. answered most of my questions. Yeah, I thought you guys might be able to use them. Actually, you should send them through to us because we might yeah. be able to do like some additional little videos. Yeah, we, we, we should yeah. do it from time to time because yeah. it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's only when people start looking at things and they start thinking more about what they really yeah. want to know. Well, and you've um, got to do your research. Well, you won't yeah. just go to the car dealership and think, oh, I might just buy a car today. Yeah, the, the other thing, uh, that, so that's a good point about industrial. You'll mm -hmm. find there's not a lot of time which confuses people. There's not a lot of information. Yeah. Um, available that you can just grab on industrial yeah. machines. And from an expert. Yeah. Oh, all, yeah. You know, and someone who's open to talk about all brands. Yeah. It's, you know, well, like, even to say they get online and say, right, this is what I'm starting to look at. They want to do their own research. It is yeah. really hard to find info. That's why we started the YouTube channel with yeah. the original, initially the Jack machines too. Yeah. Um, 
and now we're doing obviously some of the stuff with our machines. Yeah. These machines are made by a big um, a Chinese company and they make these machines yeah. for a lot of other big companies. Yeah. Um, and of course we just get them re rebadged in our name um, yeah. because they offer that service. Um, yeah. But, um, and but essentially you're they're... more then focused on selling the machines that you know you can service, yeah. you can give the good customer support. Yeah. Because you know your machines. That's like right. That. Exactly and as most people will know, we've sold a lot of jack machines and they're fantastic oh, yeah, machines too. Because yeah. um, that's what I was looking at getting yeah. before was the jack. But they don't make a machine like this at this no, point. They don't make so one with the same well, specs. Like yeah, so... Um, I'm just gonna go through because I might have some more questions. Well, there's Nikki. Nikki didn't throw Nikki. anything in. I've got a post in here. Um, so let me just find it. It's in the group. Um, so yeah, just about so about getting specs and stuff. It is hard to find specs on the machines. Um, you know what you're looking for, and I know yeah. I know I think it was even Kayla was talking about. She was having trouble trying to get her head around yeah. servo motors and all the different motor options and stuff yeah. like that. It is yeah. very confusing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in our Australia and New Zealand bag makers group, and I've got the questions here. So we'll go through some of these. We've probably already answered. Yep. Okay, Sharon and Peter. Uh, let's not, no, let's not answer that. Not answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Why do I need a flash? I have one that seems to get asked regularly. I make bags, so I need a cylinder arm machine. Why do I need a flatbed machine hmm. with a cylinder? Well, we've sort of answered that. It is hard. But yeah. Like, if you said, okay, should I just get a cylinder arm and get a flatbed extension? Sure. Yeah. If you think you need the cylinder arm more, go yeah. for it. It will yeah. cost you a little bit more. Yeah. Um, they are more expensive, um, especially that, um, like they do. They sort of start around the 25 and they can go up to 39. They can go quite, um, yeah, and then there's some automa big automatic. Big dollars. They are, but yeah, if you if you uh, have the budget and you say, right, I, I want to just get the one machine and you've can yeah. and you got something that can make you're it. You're doing a lot of cable. heavier materials. If you're mainly yeah. doing leather bags or things like that. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit of a personal choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, here's Nikki here, Nikki Peters. Geez, I wish I could be a fly on the wall yeah. for when you were here today. Yeah. <laughs> I read that Nikki, before. I have to say, you would have loved it. Yeah, yeah. I won't yeah. take all the stuff that happened behind the scenes. She lives, she lives down in Mexico too, don't <laughs> yeah, you? Don't yeah, she's down Peter south there, yeah. 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 Um, okay, here's another one from Sharon and Peter. Can I use my walking foot machine or compound feed machine to make my cotton linings or yep. do I need a domestic or straight stitch machine? Yeah, well that? you know yourself, you could use, if you had a, um, like one of these, uh, I don't like to call them semi-industrials because they're really not, but um, I know no. they're marketed like that, but let's just call them a, a robust domestic machine. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, definitely, cotton linings on those machines, fantastic. Yep. Um, you can do all that kind of stuff and then save your walking foot machine or whatever you decide to go for for your top stitching because you've got the long stitch length, yep. you can run the heavier threads, yep. it, it feeds better. It doesn't yeah. um, bunch up the stitching when it climbs the lump, you yeah, know, it, it stays. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's that's not a bad combination, I think. Yeah, because I've had yeah. the semi-industrials, they're not upset. They're just Should we keep saying that? Should yeah, we keep calling on that? Yeah, okay. um, heavy, heavy duty domestics, really, it's a yeah. heavy duty domestic. And we're not machine. talking about the, the certain one that's sold at a certain big company that's got heavy duty written on it. Yeah, not that yeah, one. We're HDs talking about, and Well, yeah, yeah well, the HD, yeah, we're not thing, talking about yeah. that. The, there's a, a machine that's called a heavy duty that's sold yes. well, and it's not, they're not, they're yeah, horrible. no, um, and I worked at the major chain store that sold them, and yeah. I can tell you there was a lot. I've like serviced that. a lot of them, so a I'm, lot of them I'm not gonna go down that road. Yeah. But yeah, when you talk about what we, what we call that is, yeah, HD9, I'm not gonna bag those machines, because no, they're fantastic. they do a great um, job for, if you're doing like, because I had a HD9, <clears> and still to me, it's not a light industrial machine. It's no, a heavy it's not, duty no. domestic. Yeah. Um, and it can handle like if I was doing canvas bags or I was doing a bit of core. Yeah. The main difference is it's got a metal like rotary that. hook. It's yeah. got a rotary hook like this machine. Yeah. Um, and it's faster because the rotary hooks can run faster. Yeah. So it's got a rotary hook yeah. instead of a top loader. Yeah. Um, the motors are still very low wattage. They're um, 900, uh, 90 to 100 watts. Yeah. Um, even a light duty Industrial is 550, yours yeah. is 750, so that's a whole horsepower. So, yeah, yeah. totally different. But, you know, but and then the plastic gears and stuff. But, yeah, the HD9s, your brother PQs, yeah. um, the little, uh, what was the Genomi that come before that as well, the 1600. Yeah, um, yeah. Br yeah, they're brilliant. They're good. You know, there's no I doubt about it. I found that they're really good, like, even with the teaching bag making classes. They handle like if they're doing the all fabric bags and they're doing fabric binding mm. and things like that, they handle that fine. Yeah. 
um, but they do still struggle. If you want to get into making leather or vinyl handbags and you're getting up to your four layers and all of that, mm. they still struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The Jill, she said she's got a machine yeah. that's got the adjustable foot, so that's, that would be the same model as yeah. what you've got. Yep. Um, so the Jill's on the yep, got the uh, version of the cylinder arm machine and just love it. Turned yep. off, foot lift adjustment, yep. yep. So she had the same um, Can you ask ask why these machines don't have a drop down right. roller guide? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely can get them. Um, I've, I've got them in stock. Um, I'm going to send, uh, I can't believe I forgot, I was going to send um, Chris one. I just, got, I just got 10 of them. <laughs> They're brilliant, they really are. They're yeah. so adjustable. Um, they have a little straight edge and also a roller edge for doing when you want to go yeah. around radiuses or if you're just doing a, a, a strap and you want to do a straight edge right. yeah. yeah they're fantastic um there's yeah. all different types that's the problem it depends on the the mounting holes some mounting holes are horizontal yeah, some are I did vertical some research and it was yeah. like oh how would i know what machine? Oh, yeah, that's, that's why oh, when you come up i'll ask and it's like oh, yeah i'm so sorry i didn't bring it yeah. so um, adam has them yeah, I haven't so. for that particular one. So, um, mm. Jill, if you if you've got like um, the thirteen forty one style mm. Juki copy or replica or similar to, um, which I'd say you would, because if you're talking about you've got the um, the hopping the climbing device on the top, yeah. then yeah, you certainly can get them. They're not expensive. Yeah. Um, um, I get them directly from the factory. They're they're quite reasonably priced and they're really great. Yeah. Um, the problem is because with the with that machine because that's a top loading bobbin. Yeah. Pardon me. You can't mount anything to the slide plate because it opens up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 whereas, yeah. Whereas, yeah. yeah with, the bo with the other other machines that have the bobbin underneath, the top's rigid. You yeah. can put little brackets and stuff. You oh, can't do it with yeah, yours. You so it, that's yeah. one of the problems. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, definitely available. Just Again, yeah. just contact me on yeah. Proso and I'll contact send you out Contact Proso by their Facebook page. Yep. That's yep. probably a really easy one because you can send them a message on there too. Um, Catley has got realistically for bag making with vinyl and leather, which machine do I really need? And can they really go through layers? Also, do these machines have extra needle height to get projects under yeah, the needle? Yeah. So yeah, presser um presser height's the main oh, thing. Yeah. Um so this one's got a really high One presser lift. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, and yeah. the, 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 a lot of the companies you're focusing on, they realise that now you need to have a lot of extra hip. But yeah, as as the what what limits the foot lift is when the needle bar is at its bottom stroke, if you have the foot lift too high, the needle bar can strike it. Oh, so you know everything's oh, as yeah. as you get bigger in machines, you get a longer needle. As soon as yeah. the lim needle's longer, yeah, everything gets higher. So then yeah, the pressure yeah. lift gets higher. So that it all increases as you go. And then yeah. if you go to an extra heavy duty that's meant for sewing literally half an inch of leather, yeah, you can fit your whole hand underneath yeah. the pressure yeah. lift. That all, <laughs> it's all proportionate. Yeah. So yeah, so once you go into walking foot, you'll appreciate the extra height yeah. straight away. Well, the new, yeah. my new Pro Sew one, it's got it's, it's really got high. Quite, yeah, it's I, yeah, got you can easy get, yeah. I can easily well, get my, my fingers, fingers under. straight underneath yeah. that. So yeah, yeah it's, it's probably a good, good fifteen height. mil or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, Huey, Huey has got what would a first time buyer user of an industrial machine need to know, and what motor would be best? Well, I think we've covered that pretty what, well. What do you want to sew? Yeah. yeah. What, what What you're intending to sew? Yeah. Light duty, medium, extra heavy. Yeah. And then um, the motor is about control, quietness, yeah. power saving. Dur servos. Definitely, I think so, now, I don't think I'd go anything except the minimum, drive. Yeah, minimum servo motor. Yeah, if minimum, you, so if yeah. you're getting a, a cheap machine or a second handy, even you've got a nice second handy, yeah. whack a, a motor on it, you can slow the speed down. Yeah, well, that's what And it saves you 80% power, 90% yeah. power, yeah, yeah, straight away. Um... Where have I got here? Christine's got, I have a heavy duty sewing machine and notice if I'm doing non heavy duty, practically any non stiff fabric, when doing reverse stitches at the start of my row or seam or hem, mm -hmm. my materials get dragged back into yes. the bobbin area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, making the project get stuck and you mm. nearly have to cut it out. That's not unusual. It. Yeah. Yep. Um, given a, I was given a non heavy duty and found it doesn't drag my project under. Yeah, both are seam machines. Do industrial machines drag soft projects into? No, that? so it's it's about the combination of the type of product you're trying to sew on the type of machine. So yep. if you've got a machine that's got a big needle hole, yeah, um, and you've got a big needle, it's going to push it boom, down. Boom! It's light yep. fabric. So what? That one way you can get rid of that is. Advance the fabric forward more, yeah, so that you're then, clearing yeah. your feet. The feet the, the, and also, too, what can happen too is if you're only just trying to start right on the edge, you're only using half of the feet dog. Yeah. So it slips and then it and then it jams it down in the hole. So start 
back and then reverse back to the thing and, yeah. and go you can try and that i've found yeah. too even just on your domestic machines it's it can happen on a domestic yeah. machine absolutely it can as well and if your needle is too big or you've got and your thread's too large needle it's... hole you've got it on like the zigzag plate yeah some machines you can change the plate so that you've just got the needle hole yeah that's exactly on domestic absolutely yeah it, it, it does happen stitch. on domestics as well yeah. um and the, the bottom bottom line is Push your fabric through a bit more, not where maybe Before where you, you want to start, start yeah, but then reverse back to it. Yeah, go a centimetre past, yep. you know where you want to start. That's right. Do a couple of stitch or do a couple of back stitches. Then that's it. Forward. Reverse back to it, so then you stabilise. You've got it started. It's got something to hold. And on and to. the feed dogs have got it holding yeah. onto it. Yeah, exactly right. Just dropped You've down. You've zoomed down. It dropped down. Let's have a and look and here. change your needle size. Reduce your needle size uh, to, to the appropriate yeah, to the fabric. Size. But yeah. then you've got to remember then that you've got a whopping big hole there with a thin needle, so it's a bit of an imbalance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just going through. I think Can, controversial might... question. Yeah. Oh, that was about the other uh, the, uh, the semi and jump. Yeah, we sort of covered the semi and jump. I think we've flogged yeah, them enough. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. enough. And I think we've hit the end okay. of our questions. I don't think I will just go back through here. We've got them all up. But um, yeah, I, I think, think the bottom done. line is what, mm. what I get from my people. Is the bottom line is work out what you, the ninety percent of your sewing is. Yeah. If it's medium duty, is in yeah. bags. Yeah. Then focus on getting a machine that's going to do all that stuff yeah. extremely, and use your domestic. Yeah. If you really want to get a fast, efficient, beautiful, smooth, light duty machine yeah. where you might do a bit of quilting, yeah. Um, which because there is ladies that cross over between yeah. quilting as oh, well, definitely. you know. Yeah. Um, or you might do um, you might do um. Uh, you might make um, cot liners or something that's light, yeah. then yeah, you can swing between the two, stay yeah. with that, talk to your tech, get the bigger needles, heavier threads, your advice on yeah. what they can do to, that you can do to, to you make it work. get the right feet. Yeah, all like, sorts of feet, yeah. Like, because if you've got your straight stitch machine, like you can get then if you're going to do your vinyls or your leather, get your Teflon feet. Yeah. And, you know, like there's still things And feet like are cheap, Chris, as you know, know, like industrial feet are so much cheaper than domestic yeah. feet because they're sold in massive volumes. Yeah. So they so and, and also your industrial too, talking about that, as far as cost, low maintenance. They're self-oiling, nearly yeah. all of them, and now the yeah. new ones with the dry sump. Yeah. So they're self-oiling, um, they're very low maintenance, you clean yeah. and brush it out yourself. Yeah. You can get it serviced by a tech, but if it's if it's not playing up, don't yeah. mess with it, just yeah. keep your oil up yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, change your needle frequently. Yeah, and often. Use, yeah, really you, often. And I find mm. too, like even on a domestic machine, if you start Same. hearing your needle making like a... Like Pop, the so popping noise, noise yeah. You yeah. know, when you start... It's not like just gliding through the fabric. Change your needle. Yeah, you've got a yeah. fishing hook on the end of it. Yeah, it's popping on the way in, or it's hooking on the way yeah. out. Another yeah. common thing that um, I've had people ask, and I've seen people ask, like not on this one here, but was with your thread shredding. Yeah. And I tend to find that if I just increase the size of my needle, yep, yeah, good stuff to suit the thread. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it eliminates. It does. 99% of the time. And, that, and you know yeah. what, and what, uh, this is a funny concept, if you can imagine, that what, a lot of you don't see it while it's sewing, but when a machine sews, the thread comes through the needle, yeah. it has to go around a, some sort of bobbin. So your yeah. bobbin can be, you know, that round. Yeah, your case, so your thread, yeah. so, your, so the machine lets through um, 80 mil of thread, say for example, yeah. and it goes, all right, then your take-up lever re removes it all. Yeah. But you've only stitched that far. Yeah. So the thread goes in and out of the needle, it's going back in and out of the needle, mm. probably 30 times before it finally gets sewn out. Never even thought about so that So if before. there's a burr in your bobbin area, a burr on your needle plate, a burr yeah. on your foot, your needle's dodgy, it's a, a poor quality needle, yeah. or, you, or it's um, or it's too, or the eye's too small, um, yeah. then it's chafing yeah. at a high speed. Somewhere. 20, 30, 50 times before it finally yeah. gets out of the machine and into the fabric. Yeah. So it gets flogged. So it could so be getting burred up and things, roughed yeah. up yeah. anywhere along your that hook, path. Your hook clearances, but back needles forwards, are first thing. Forwards, yeah. Needle, Needle fitting and orientation yeah. in an industrial because it's got a round top, yeah. so you have to orientate it correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah, because so, yeah. if you don't thread the needle right, because it's not like a domestic where it's yeah. got like your needle's got a flat edge. Yeah. On your industrials, it's a round. Yeah, your needle you bar's tubular. Needle yep. So it's. You yeah. had a good tip actually on your on the Oz sewing machine YouTube mm. channel about threading, putting installing the needle so yep. that it was straight. There's a really good video on that, and it was where you've got um. Oh, you use you use old... another needle, needle or something in the hole. Yep. And you line it up straight, and then you make sure you, you use it like a rudder yeah. to sort of rub back. You can use it to push up and rudder. And I've done that, and yep. it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's an old. That wasn't. I didn't come up with that idea. Yeah, so that's that just been handed down oh, from someone been, else. Yeah, yeah. That's been. Yeah. It's, it's the same old. It's a. 
it's an old sort of um, one of those old sort of things if you're, if you're having difficulty orientating. Yeah. And especially, it's easy with the machines where like an overlocker that the needle's orientated towards yeah. you, but most lock stitch machines, the, the, the bobbins either on the right hand side, like a compound, or it's on the left hand side, yeah. regardless of the orientation, but the needle has to face. Yeah. And know, I remember when I right. first got yeah. my industrial, I was like, do I thread the needle from the outside in towards the, you know, the bed yeah. of the machine, or do I thread it? But yeah. Like I wasn't quite sure, and then yeah. which you know way and that. Yeah, your, your needle shape and the long groove, and yeah. that's that's something which um you know you, you mm. need to um when you buy your machine you need to have you know I know it's a lot of people can buy online but and that's why you need backup help from yeah. whoever you're buying it from yeah. because they can sit down and go right I've had, I couldn't tell how many people I've had ring and they haven't used their machine for a, you know especially horse rug people that they yeah. use, they're seasonal they don't yeah. use it they'll yeah. use, they'll make they'll fix some rugs and they'll go my thread just keeps pulling out of my needle yeah. it's like which way have you got the threaded. Right to left, yeah. that's your problem. Because yeah. yeah. so you've got to thread left to right. Yeah. Um, so little things like that, um, yeah. quick fixes, and um, that's where you need people you can ring up and they can fix your fix yeah. your problem in a couple of seconds because it's just something you've forgotten to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and sort of it's just something trivial. It can, yeah. that can really impact your sewing. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why I, I say to people who buy my machines, I don't sit there for an hour. Yep. and let something drive you crazy when you can ring me in in, in 20 seconds generally yeah you can say oh that's what happened this is what you do and it's fixed yeah don't waste yep. it, don't or if waste it's at time. time and you're sewing send them a message oh i like talk to yeah i'm page. talking to people like, all yeah, the time because like, yeah. you can it'll get back to you really quick yeah. um for sure yeah but i might let adam go and we will definitely do is some it clock in here or a, i, I think time is it? adam's family has been patiently waiting here the whole they used time. to they used to listen to me um, talk about sewing machines joy you would have seen i shared a little video earlier joy is adam's wife and she actually puts these machines oh together. she does yeah yeah she put together 20 oh, 20 machines the other day and, and yeah. she was right yeah, she she got a, she got all measurements locked in her head. She does it all. I have to ask her what where everything yeah. has to be. And Adam's little girl's been patiently waiting as well, and we haven't heard a peep out of her the whole time. No, she's been a little angel. Yeah, she's alright. Yeah, she's been good. Yeah, well, right. thank you so much, Adam. Like, no worries. No, I'm so glad I come up. Everyone's going to appreciate this video so much. I know I have. Mm. Oh, it's been really good to me. Yeah, you. there's a lot to know, yeah. um, and there's a lot we've missed out probably, but um, we'll but get it, to yeah, do it again. yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah. I think um, we've done. We've tried to do a visit down to the show well room. well we did talk about that Ooh, didn't we we, we did talk something yeah. about doing something about that yeah i'd like to run some I sort of um, workshop or something down at port macquarie hey? yeah <laughs> that, I'm, I'm totally got a bombard pro so <laughs> yeah what, what essentially what we're sort of thinking when we just it's all the different we've got light duty medium you duty you've got all the machines yeah so people yeah. can sew on them we can give them a bit of paper and they say no i don't like how that one won't do this that, and they can mm. narrow mm. narrow things down to say yeah. whether they just buy a machine for me is irrelevant yeah. it's just but it's, it's the types of machines it's knowing what they think they need or what they think will suit them they best they even bring yeah. some samples of the material oh, yeah, that they've been yeah. making yeah. even some samples of the projects that they sort of mm. make to help give you an idea to you'd be surprised now to with what um, sort of machine would best yeah suit. you will be surprised light duty machines um again we call them light duty they're yeah. still very heavy and they're very yeah. strong yeah. but they're, they're made for apparel yeah. manufacturing yeah. but because of the new technology with the direct drive yeah. and then the, and the way the machines feed now they're, they're so yeah. refined they sew through the thickness they sew through is ridiculous. Well, because so they're can, sewing like denim jeans oh, and yeah. things like that on these machines. Five mil so, of leather, no yeah. problem on a light duty machine, yeah. no problem at all. Yeah. So they are very capable. Yeah. Um, so you, you know you don't just getting the right machine. Just get like, that balance get right and, and work out what you yeah. want and what you what you yeah. and what you think you're going to be making yeah. in the future or where you're heading. Yeah. And target that machine. Because I know uh, in the beginning, if I had have just come to you right from the very beginning when I was looking at getting my first industrial machine. I would have saved myself thousands because yeah. I bought a few machines and sold them, and like because like no, that's not really what I wanted, and you know they just weren't quite. Right. It's hard because that's part of the journey. It's it's, always, it's it's okay for people to tell me, oh, you need this, but they might they might be in their budget, or yeah. they might they may not. They, well, they don't wanna... do enough of that, or yeah, it's yeah. hard, or they just think that you're just trying to sell them something. Do you know what I mean? So it's like sometimes, you, well, it's... my boss she bought a brand yeah. new car. It's a big four wheel flash drive thing. And she hates it. Yeah. She's selling it already. Because yeah. she says, oh, I bought it and it looks beautiful. Yeah. She goes, oh, I hate driving. That's why I have all the machines in the shop. They're not there just to, to look yeah. at. They're all there to, to, to so sew with. So you bring some fabric in yeah. because... um. Well, and you know, like I tell the husbands, if they come in with the partners, you know, because yeah. you know, a lot of time the hubbies are the ones that are hard enough to crack because yeah. the, 
the lady always already know, knows what she wants, but yeah. um, it's not always the case, but, here, but yeah. if you, once you sit on an industrial machine after you've been working with a domestic and you're selling oh. it, you're done. Yeah, bring you your, bring your wallet with you because they're, they're so different. The difference is yeah. staggering, it's, you know. Um, it's like chalk and cheese. Yeah, it is. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, they do one, only one job. It's like riding but, a bike to rock, driving a car. Yeah, yeah, or, or, yeah like, or a just, performance you know, car. They're not both getting from A to B, but hey, yeah, it, it's, they're, they're built for purpose. Nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it is, um, it is, once you sit yeah. on it, then you, you straight away you get what it's all about. Yeah. As soon as you start to sign, you feel, yeah. feel it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's different. Well, there you go. So thank you again, Adam. No worries. Like, it's just been fantastic. No, I love like, it. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So, that won't be the last one, I don't think. We'll no, do I reckon we'll, we'll be doing a bit more of this. Yeah. About, I yeah. think I need to go to Port Macquarie. You need to teach me how to make a bag. Yeah, I reckon I could do that. Yeah, yeah you reckon? I reckon. Yeah, oh, no, it's a tough I might, I might make you start you on a nice little easy one. Okay. Right? A little yeah. man bag. Oh, yeah, I'm right. Make my man bag. Yeah, your man first. <laughs> uh, okay, then, that's all from us. So, thanks for joining us. And if you've got any questions, head to ProSo Facebook page and also Oz Commercial Sewing Machine. Sewing Machine. So, that's Pete, Pete's down in Bendigo. So, Pete's. Yep. Yeah, S and P saying supplies yep. sharing and sharing and Peter they sell yep. got, the featherweight oh, bits and pieces. Yeah, I've got too. a couple of things off of them. Yeah, so they um they import um, some of the featherweight stuff. I've also got a feather like I've got a, like a vintage sewing machine, but I've got a, off them as well the bobbin tension meter. Yep. So one of these. Uh, and also, there's a video on the channel. There is now just to, just to, to just to kill Peter's sales, but he gets some of the. Um, we are getting the sorry, um, Peter. yeah yeah <laughs> not sorry Peter um, we get um, we've got the um, uh, that's the vintage one which that's looks really nice one. and it yeah, suits them yeah. but we're also getting in the tower style ones Ooh, you know the, the nice cool. handheld um, industrial oh. commercial ones which are good for embroidery machines and stuff as well oh. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll send that's you one good. of those yeah. yeah so we've got those coming as well oh, a really good price budgets. too yeah yeah. Mm. yeah and I'll do more videos as well so that's it we're really going yeah yeah we're really going. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Thank you.